Welcome to the mathematical software birds of a feather session. Um, my name's David Bremner and uh, I'm in some sense a mathematician. I'm, uh, I work in a computer science department uh, but uh, about mm, half, three quarters of the things that I publish, I publish in math journals. So I guess that's one definition of a mathematician. Um, and I'm also uh, in the Debian new maintainers queue. If you're listening for more, I'm waiting to hear from you. Um, so, uh, like most people, I want to make Debian better for people like me. Right? <laughs> Some universal truth. So, uh, I wanted to get together and uh, just uh, have a kind of informal discussion about uh, what we think the state of uh, Debian as a tool for mathematicians is. Um, and if there's, we should somehow be prioritizing some packages um, or what the, the challenges are. Um, so there's a Gobby session where, where I propose we can, we can make some notes. Uh, probably you, well, we can all make notes together. Uh, and to, so, so to connect to that, oops, you, if you can see the very bottom line there, if you have the package gobby 0.5 installed, then it's just gobby 0.5 minus c gobby.debian.net. And uh, if you're listening to the video stream, or I guess that's the only other option, uh, you can do that from anywhere. So you can virtually participate in that way, too. Um, so maybe in the spirit of birds of a feather session, I could ask uh, anybody else who wants to introduce themselves and, and say sort of what their interest in in uh, mathematical software in Debian is as, a, as an administrator supporting other users, as a student, as a teacher, uh, whatever. So, anybody else want to uh, chime in and give us some context? CJ uh, Fernley, um, I came back for Sage Math and Debian. Okay, <laughs> so so that's kind of in so much as we have an agenda, that's on it. So so great. One, uh, once again, I just kept saying my name today too often. Uh, my name is Yaroslav Halchenka, and I am not a mathematician. <laughs> it's okay. Hi, I'm Varun. Uh, I'm doing PhD at Connell in me mechanical and aerospace engineering, and okay. I've been using some Python uh, scientific softwares like Python SciPy, Python NumPy. Right. And so I do a lot of post processing, and I need to plot my results and all. So I use Matplotlib for plotting. Okay. That's so, that kind of software. Yeah. So for you, the Python <coughs> library support is pretty important. Yeah. Hi, my name is uh, Raju Kusmanchi. I work in a finance firm called BlackRock. Uh, we do use uh, free software, uh, I mean, for research and purpose and stuff like that, mostly to do, like, say, regressions, uh, data analysis, uh, like, say, Octave, uh, mm -hmm. TechMax, R package, uh, LayPack, and, like, pretty much anything related to math and uh, uh, database-oriented stuff. So would you say your use is mostly numerical stuff? You mentioned... Yes, numerical analysis mostly. Okay. And like, you know, like sometimes we do use like, say, LaTeX, uh, but it doesn't exactly like scientific, but we do use it for generating reports and stuff like that. Right. So, so in the sort of intro to scientific software session, which will happen later... <laughs> yeah, well... Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention is that I think that uh, part of supporting working scientists of, of all kinds, and, and my own interest is in supporting mathematicians, is supporting publishing. I mean, supporting typesetting and, and diagramming tools. I think that's a crucial part of yeah. the 
and the plotting software also like yes uh, yeah so or, all the <laughs> things like go together as a like you know as a group rather than like individual packages so sure yeah it's important to have everything working like right when you need them so anybody else frank pass the mic uh, Frank Brocken, University of Groningen in the Netherlands. Um, I would be interested in hearing about any statistical software that would be available, in particular the kind of software that could, for example, compare or cope with um, packages like SPSS and things like that. So you know about R? I've heard of it. Okay. But, um, I must admit that I never really looked into that, but maybe I should. I think you should track down... Uh, at DebConf, Don Armstrong, and, and, and say, tell me about R. I know he had, I think he had a boff already, but there might be another, I think there's a, another R boff during DebConf, so I, I would definitely check that out. I'm really R ignorant, but uh, I know that a lot of, I think it's, it's, a, it's supplanted S completely now in, in okay. academia, I would say. So. All right, thank you. Uh, Adam Powell, uh, I'll be uh, talking this afternoon about uh, partial differential equation solvers and linear algebra and different things. But uh, but for the purposes of this session, I'm wondering if there are uh, symbolic algebra uh, software uh, that's that's free. Uh, I'd love to hear more about that. So uh, I guess the ones that I know about uh, are uh, Maxima, which is based on the old uh, project from MIT and has mutated many times since then, um, and Axiom are, are both general purpose. Maybe. You have also another library called Chinac, which is C++ and it's pretty fine to use and pretty nice. Yeah. Well, you also have SymPy. It's a Python library for symbolic, which will be at some point integrated in Sage. Right. and how like we could package it at some point and it provides convenience for differentiation but not symbolic differentiation but this automated differentiation based on the structure okay. uh, peri gp isn't maybe general purpose enough for symbolic algebra but it I, i've used it for lightweight stuff Uh, I want to make a comment about the statistical package. Uh, like Octave has uh, quite a bit of support for usual statistics, but I mean, like if you want to do just like uh, simple statistics, but if you want to do stuff like hypothesis testing, then you probably have to go to different things. But uh, Octave is a good starting point if you are looking in statistical packages also. Uh, on R, um, I, I've used it a bit. It's a full-fledged uh, programming language uh, for statistics. And uh, one of my partners was with a market research company. And they did everything with R, seeing it as full industrial strength. So uh, just to add a couple more adjectives. Yeah, and, and there are also a very strong uh, community around R. Uh, just a brief introduction, I'm working at Scilab on a daily basis, I'm employed to work on this, and I'm also trying to uh, manage the Debian science team and trying to package many software on that, with Adam, for example. And we're going to talk more about Debian science as a, yeah, as yeah, a team in the afternoon. Yeah, I'm doing an introduction this afternoon about that. I would like to comment that uh, uh, for symbolic computation, while R isn't packaged, for, not R, while Reduce isn't packaged for Debian yet, it is now under open source free oh, license. Great. Uh, can source can you say something about the particular strength of Reduce? <sighs> well, especially in physics, it's got a lot of historical uh, routines available from various users, some of which are not free, but the basic package is free, and uh, there are a lot of people who know it. Right. Yeah, I, I've definitely heard of it. Someone else wants to? 
So I could mention one more package. Um, so I'm a bit of an oddball in this room, I think. I'm a discrete mathematician, and, and rather than working with PDEs and, and things like that. Uh, and for discrete mathematicians, uh, the system gap is really useful. Uh, it, it, uh, it's very nice for exploring uh, things with permutations and groups and uh, has okay interfaces to dealing with graphs. So, uh, are, are there any are people here at all interested in things like uh, graph isomorphism and uh, or it just doesn't come up? Okay. <laughs> so, anyway, you know where to find me if you are. Well, I, I'm interested in discrete math and Right, right. I love discrete math. Okay, so we had a, a round of, of introductions, um, and I, I guess are there things that are are bugging people? I mean, I know there's this issue with sage math being essentially very difficult to package. I don't yet understand all the details, and I guess Rogerio's not here, so he's kind of the point person on this. Okay, I, maybe we'll have to we'll have an offline discussion, or if, if maybe we'll have a sage math specific thing when we track Rogerio down. Um, are there other? I mean, I, I can talk about sort of systematic things, packaging software for Debian. I mean, but I mean, from a user perspective, are there things that uh, you wish were in Debian and aren't, or it's not Debian's not keeping up? Okay, Debian's never really keeping up if you, you're looking at stable. But. Do we have any good meta packages? Sylvester, uh, maybe? We do. In fact, uh, Andrea Style has been working on Debian blends. I don't know if you're familiar with it. I'm going to talk quickly about that this afternoon, but it is basically a kind of meta package in various, so various scientific fields. So you've got mathematics, you've got engineering, physics, and so on. And this is a meta package which will try to reference all the package we've got in the archive or the one we want to package. So yeah, we, we've, we've got that. Do we have any like, uh, Can you use the mic? Oh, Sorry, okay. I know it's a bit. Oh, you're a, you're yeah. a star. I, I would also be interested in something like knowing about uh, like an optimization package, like constraint optimization, nonlinear optimization, if anyone has experience with such kind of stuff. So uh, linear optimization, we have GLPK, which uh, I find to be a nice trade-off between sort of lightweight and working quite well. Um, there's uh, Soren, somebody has also been working on getting the coin OR packages. So uh, IBM has been uh, funding, promoting I think we've got a few of coin into the archive, yeah. but not, not all of them, because it's pretty long to package. And Co coin is them. almost its own distribution kind of thing. They have a lot of packages, but um, I would say if you look at the coin site and, and you see stuff there that, I mean, the longest, there was some uncertainty about licensing for a while, but that seems to be okay now. Um, and so I think if you look at, if you look for coin-or, and I know there's nonlinear stuff there as well, yeah. uh, which may not be packaged in Debian yet, but, but I would file a request for package and, and uh, maybe CC the maintainer of the other coin yeah. packages. And, and uh, I think it's, it's at least possible that you get some yeah. positive response there. Like the closest I was able to find is uh, like GLPK and uh, GSL, like the GNU scientific library. Okay. Uh, they have some routines for like nonlinear optimization, uh, but not like again, very extensive. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of a, I, I mean, I don't know, is anybody here really a nonlinear optimization expert? It seems to be a bit of a black art. Uh, there is also uh, Python open OPT. Mike, I know. Um, <laughs> there is also Python open OPT, which provides all kinds of built-in optimizers, linear and nonlinear, but also interfaces to many more, even commercial ones. Right. So it's within kind of unified interface. So if you're in Python world, you might try that one. Sure, thanks. 
There was also a couple, there's a simplex solver. Oh, there's LP opt as well, yeah, I think. Yeah, what is it? LP solve. LP, LP solve. solve. LP solve. Which is, also seems to be, re I mean. That's I MIT, it's MIT or something like that. I haven't solved huge problems with what? it. What? I haven't solved huge problems with it, but it seems, I would say it's definitely usable for teaching and, and for, for. Uh, I, I actually use it in like, where at my day job. Okay, okay. great. That's um, and if anybody's interested in a, Ruby interface for that. I, you know, I have that. I'm sure somebody is. <laughs> you have that meaning? Is it open source? Is it in Debian? It, it, well, okay. I tried to get it back into the whatever it was the LPSolve base. Okay, um, and I got a little bit of resistance there. So, so it's it's nowhere. It's just it. Uh, it isn't publicly available yet. I'll, the company I'm working for is going out of business, so I'll probably put it uh, out there. Uh, one of the things that I found cool about it as a, just using it, I mean, okay, so, so a little bit more. I actually, what I use this for is to solve network flow, mm -hmm. okay, uh, with additional constraints. Um, and, so, and so this was really, it's really used inside of a Ruby Rails application. Um, and one of the cool things about that in particular is you can solve something, change, you know, change the equations and all that and continue right from where you left. It, it'll take the, the, the last solution that you had and, and use that as the starting set. And it may have to throw out certain constraints because they're now violated in your, in your new uh, situation. But, but the, so there, there's a, there is a Python interface, uh, but I have a Ruby interface, which I like better because it's more object-oriented. The Python, you know, so, so it was originally a C library, and so there are a million C calls. Uh, and the Python, and there's also C++, they both um, were just, just front ends to the, to the C. But then what I did was I actually used, created an object and methods in that, those objects, and and things like that. But I'll, I'll uh, contact, if anybody's interested in it, uh, contact me in probably about six months. I'll just can, put it Can out. you tell me your name? Or? Uh, Rocky, Rocky at GNU.org. Rocky GNU? At, at. Ah, okay, at that's not so hard. GNU.org. Okay, so Ruby oh. bindings for LP solve? Right. Okay, great. Thanks. I'm, I'm kind of doing uh, some advertising for my software, but uh, we've got some experts in this field in the Scilab team, so we've got something like mm. 10 or 20 extensions. Uh, we've got our own packaging system, but I am happy also to package some Scilab module into Debian. Just send me an email and I can package them. I've got direct access to the core developer. So that pretty, and we've got some interface with LPSolve, and I'm sure Octave got it too. Sylvester, so, so would you mind giving us a, a two-minute sales pitch for Scilab? I think it's underappreciated. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not a clone of MATLAB, uh, but we are reaching the same target, and basically the sources, the base, the so very whole sources of Scilab are the same as MATLAB when it used to be open source in the public domain. Uh, so basically Scilab is a numerical computing software, so you, you can do matrix computation, optimization, but uh, you've got uh, visualization, advanced visualization with it, the data visualization. You've got also a, a kind of simulink, which is called XCOS, which allow you to do some simulation some, and some uh, uh, control. So you can do some real time and so on with it. So it is a big software. Uh, it is financed by, it used to be financed by the INRIA, the French Research Institute in France, close to Versailles. Uh, now we are starting to be uh, leaving the INRIA, and we are about 15 to 20 people working on a daily basis on Scilab. So we are open source. We used to be uh, half free, semi-free, because we had a, a crappy license, but we switched for the CC license, which is basically uh, GPL compatible. It's a French one license, but okay. it, you can use it everywhere. So 
So it is, it is. We are not like Octav. We are not trying to reach uh, a full compatibility with MATLAB. We are using the good idea, but when they are doing crappy things, which is pretty common, <laughs> we decide to change it and to use it a better way. At, we, at least we believe. So I think that's what discouraged some people was the licensing for a yeah. while. But, but so we are in the archive now. Uh, I have two questions from the IIC. Uh, the first one is, how many copies of minimization algorithms do we have in the archive? And how many more do we want? Do we just keep packaging everything we find? It, it's true that's the general philosophy of Debian, but we could. Uh, so I, I assume, can you ask the questioner if they mean linear constraint minimization? <laughs> Or maybe they're watching the video stream so that yeah, they, they can watching. get the question the, directly. The question was made by Demil, but I don't know. I, I think it's a good question. Uh, I think that some of these packages are not hard to maintain, and some of them are. Um, so I think that um, GLPK and LPSolve don't put too much load on us as maintainers. Um, and so, so one of the problems that I had with LPSolve in particular was I just wanted to put like an autoconf style configure there. And, and I think there was maybe some conflict, you know, uh, and, the, and uh, there's a maintainer and sort of like the guy who writes the code, and neither one of them actually believe in testing. <laughs> so so uh, they, 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 they take the kind of view that users will sort of find find errors. And, and if you're in, you know, if you're doing this, uh, if, if you're a business or something like that, you can't have this kind of thing that, um, that when, and, uh, uh, that when a new release comes out, you, you discover bugs. And so a number of people, if, when, if you follow the LPSolve forums, they don't upgrade to new releases because they don't want to be the ones to, to, to discover problems. And the ones that do, are kind of annoyed that they are discovering problems. So, so I don't know if I have the, the latest findings, for example, the latest LP solve, okay? Uh, but I also have a package, something that you could just type make config, you type configure, make, make install, make test, or something like that. Maybe I can ask the, the questioner, how many bugs do we have outstanding on LP solve and GLPK? I mean, for me, if, we have packages in the archive that are piling up bugs and, and they're under maintained and they're serving essentially the same clientele. I mean, I think that, I mean, unfortunately the APIs are different, but I think those two packages in particular really are serving the same purpose. Then, then that's a problem we should think about, whether we should concentrate our, our effort. Okay, um, well, the question I didn't. And so, okay. Yeah, but as soon as he does, and, and but there's another question. Um, well, he has just said uh, it's also about whether to go out and package the next library that might be useful. I, I'm not sure I understand the question. Uh, maybe somebody else wants to jump in, Adam. This may be related to the previous question that uh, you know the, these you know, new new libraries, new software comes up, and do we just want to package all of it, and uh, and is it uh, uh, is it useful to, for people? And I guess this is the same thing that we have for you know ten different linear algebra libraries, and for that matter, multiple web browsers and desktop environments, etc. Uh, I think something that we have the opportunity to do in, in mathematical software, perhaps, uh, at least where there are somewhat standardized pieces that one can put together, is is to not just package things, but to, it takes a lot of effort, but to, to write or at least start writing some middleware that aggregates a lot of them uh, so that one can then do, use front ends that, that can hook into a lot of these different ones. And so uh, linear algebra is an example where there are no standard interfaces or, or storage formats uh, for, for sparse matrices. Uh, there's some pretty common things that you have to do in storing a sparse matrix, but, uh, but different libraries do it different ways. But then there's this uh, Petsy library, which uh, connects to about eight different ones and pre presents a, a fairly standard API 
to an application that lets you choose whether you want you know, spools or, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't go to conferences often, so I don't know if there's standard pronunciations, but UMF pack or, or, or a Scala pack or other, uh, other um, back ends that you can hook into. Uh, so, so this is something that, um, uh, that uh, I don't know if they're, again, they're similar, uh, straightforward APIs one can write for, for optimize, uh, optimization uh, uh, software, whether linear or nonlinear, but, uh, but this is uh, an opportunity that we have in something like Debian where we have so many packages uh, and we can then choose on a, on a you know, if, if not runtime, then at least compile time basis, uh, what we want to use and, and uh, the best features in each one. So at the risk of putting my own thoughts into things, I, I would say the question is the usual question that gets asked in Debian, which is, are we expending our effort wisely? Um, my impression is that in the scientific area, it's less of a problem people packaging the latest cool thing because, I mean, let's face it, the latest Fortran library for LU decomposition is not cool, right? I, I mean, it, it, and so I, my impression, and, and I welcome other people's opinions on this, is that most of us are packaging things for our work or for our users' work. And I know my own error is that sometimes I, I start packaging things uh, too early. I mean, I, I, I need something for a project, and the first thing I do is make a Debian package. Uh, I know CJ approves of this mode, but I mean, then I don't end up uploading it, right? Because I discover it's no good. So, uh, but I think. My, my impression is that, that, that as a group we're less guilty of this than, say, the desktop widgets or, or other uh, more uh, sort of hobby-driven. I, sorry, I don't want to... So I hope everybody takes that in the right way, right? I mean, uh, may, maybe people are doing this stuff as their hobby as well, and that's what drives them to to work on R or MATLAB or whatever. But somehow it's not, you know, it's not something you, you kick around with the other kids in your CS201 class and say, hey, look, this is great new dropping bricks game that we should package. Any, people disagree? Am I being too smug? Yes, I've got other questions. Uh, um. I, I, I think it's always better if it's integrated with Scilab or SageMath or Maxima and, you know, but, but people always want to write libraries in their favorite tool and, you know, it's maybe easier uh, to write something yourself. And, and if, if one of those tools is out there, it might, might it would be ideal if someone would wrap it into one of the bigger packages. But, you know, the people doing it are diff different, and so it, might, it's not, it doesn't always happen. Well, may I suggest that we move the discussion to the afternoon session? Because actually this has nothing to do with mathematical software in Debian. It's more scientific software in Debian in general. I think so maybe other people would be... That's a good, good point, and, and it's, also, it's also the kind of team management issue that I think the afternoon session has more focus on. So that's fine for me. Okay. So just there's one more question. Yeah. So just one more question from, from Anna's, I think. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, oh. Do you think a Debian ma mathematics blend would find enough in supporters? Okay, so this also I think is a good question to talk about this afternoon, but I'll give a short answer, which I think is not yet, because I think that the Debian science blend needs to be rolling first, and uh, if we can't get enough users for Debian science, then it's foolish to split uh, in some sense. But is there already a task page? Is there a task page on Debian Science Blend? Yes, there is. Oh, okay. So 
this last question was from Andres Thiel. Andres, so. we're talking about your stuff. <laughs> So, but then, um, what, where's the threshold to come up with a blend, a separate blend? I mean, the, 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 the major point in having a blend is that you do not have to do something else, right? You mean pieces of additional information that glues things together, right? And, and so what would you achieve by doing something separate for mathematics packages than what you would do for any other scientific field or science as a whole. So what I've heard articulated in this room today is people's conception of mathematical software uh, being closely tied to, to my conception of scientific computing and, and numerical software. And I think that is uh, that's at the heart of the Debian science uh, effort. So uh, it may be a question of naming. I don't know. We have we have these ongoing debates, which again we can we can pick up later. Yeah, I I agree. But um, so there is a task for mathematics and having a a separate plan. I mean, this is this is math is only an example, right? The, the, mm. the Discussion is, is valid for any other field too, but w do people believe that n you know coming up with a separate blend actually increases visibility enough to be worth the effort? I, I, and that should be the goal, right? You, you need to have more people to package even more duplicates of more algorithms, <laughs> and 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 figure out that there are actually duplicates, right? So you need to, you need to have people that take a close look. And if you if you are one guy that packages everything then you won't have the time, right? You do it for the first 10, maybe 20 packages, and then you need to give up at some point. And so is creating a separate blend as opposed to just maintain a task within a blend the major different thing to do that yields something that is worth doing it? I, I think that someone else will have to advocate that because uh, for me, I'm not... I'm unfortunately not the user that the effort targets. Uh, I mean, I'm you know building my own packages and using my own packages and not using the mathematics task, right? Because for me, I mean, the, the point of the mathematics task as I understand it is I'm going to sit down at this machine and uh, install a bunch of things so that most of the tools I need will be there. And that's not really the way I use Debian. I used app cache for that question. I, I mean, I don't, the distinction between installed on my machine and available in the archive is smaller. I think a, a useful thing that a task can do is help people find things, right? And, and so maybe we should think about it. Are we? I mean, it's documenting as much as anything else what, what's somehow making it a bit more clear, the kind of tagging. I have one more comment from Andres. Uh, that th that's a remark. The threshold for a blend is to have enough people who are doing the work. Right. And so we'll see if we have reached that threshold for the science blend. I guess. Uh, I just want to make a brief comment about this granular granularity thing. Like one of the things that attracted me to Debian in the beginning is you have like one mailing list like called Debian user. You have a problem with Debian and you are using Debian like you go and ask there. You don't need to think twice about like whether to go to this mailing list or whether to ask this guy. So it would be like nice to have like instead of having like you know like okay so there are five users let me create like a group for it and there are three users let me create a group for it and like there will be another user who doesn't know where to ask like uh, whether to ask his question like in the first group or in the second group or whether to create a third group altogether like so i think it it would be like you know i don't know like uh, but it would be better to have like just a wholesome group where 
you have a question related to something related to science, you go and ask there. Uh, I don't know, like I think that that will be a better way to develop like the user base and like the applications, just my opinion. So I could respond to that in two different ways. I, I, I guess the, the direct answer to your question is there's a mailing list, Debian Science, which is friendly to both packaging and support questions. Uh, I think that everybody who's on the list would welcome users of scientific software in, in Debian to, to come there. So right. that, does that answer yeah, your like question? So, so for example, like say a user using, like I mean doing research in physics might have a question with LAPAC. Mm -hmm. Then he doesn't know whether, like you know, like uh, whether it falls in the mathematics group mm -hmm. expertise or whether it falls in the physics group, right? Or like you know, uh, I, I see. I mean, sure. So this is an argument against further specialization. Yeah. Like I think it's better to have a bigger group than like having smaller groups, but a lot of them. Did somebody pass uh, Adam the mic. Well, I guess uh, the the, uh, the difficult thing about Debian user, of course, is the the bandwidth that it's just lot, lots and lots of messages. But I don't think uh, I don't feel I don't know if I think anyone here feels overwhelmed by the the traffic on Debian Science. Uh, so yes, that's so true. Adding uh, mathematics to it, I think, or, or, or having mathematics in its scope, but is not a not a problem. So that, well, that's how I would how I would decide on when to break break it up. Plus, there are bad people like me who read. Debian science and don't read Debian user. So. I, I, uh, on, on, um, it's always better to have general purpose software and to integrate lots of stuff. But most people, for reasons that I uh, abhor, are led to specialization and more specialization, and they often just have one thing to do. We need more people who um, are able in their jobs and school to be more comprehensive and integrative and pull in all these different algorithms and libraries and components into uh, larger. It just, the way of the world is that that, that comprehensive integrative approach is less common. And it inherently always happens second. First you have 50 little pieces and then someone says, this is great, I'm gonna integrate them. But it's always, we, we always need more people doing integration work because the fragmentation to specialization happens first and most people's jobs encourages it. Your boss doesn't give you enough time to integrate it with Maxima or Sage Math or Scilab. Um, so, just a reality check. I would like a, oh, I, I would like a slightly contrary view, which is that any time you're gonna put a lot of effort into integration, you better be ready to put twice as much effort into testing, because you'll break things. So, so it's harder as well as on the tail end, um, are, w if anyone else, but I, I'd like to, to talk about Sage Math for a few minutes. Is now time, or you're I, the moderator? I, I think so. Sure. I, I guess uh, it's an important issue for us to, to think about. It, at the moment, it doesn't look like it will be in squeeze. That, that's where we stand. So, and I mean, it's going to need some heroic efforts by people who care about this integrated... <clears throat> I mean, SageMath is somehow the ultimate integrated math package, right? I mean, I, I think almost everything we mentioned today is glued together by SageMath. Are, are you a SageMath user? Yeah. Very lightly, okay, because but I, would like to be more. Yeah, uh, I had a look quickly few months ago, and if I understand correctly, they are merging everything, so you need basically many dependencies to be packaged before being able to have SageMath into the archive. And moreover, the main issue is that uh, you have to follow the exact ver same version. So for example, if you got version X into of SageMath, you will need version 5.2.1 of Scilab, for example, which makes very hard 
for the packager to package stage map because you have to follow pretty much the exact, exact same version of the dependencies they are using in their distribution. And it is very hard to package for this because if they are not following the same way as we do in Debian, it will be hard to update SageMath for the lib library we are using into the archive. So it's, I think it's a very big package, and very it, hard to package also. I, 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 I've, I've been updating, I've been looking at the Wikipedia page updating things and I haven't gotten nitty gritty into it, but I'm 98% sure that every dependency is already in Debian. Now you raise an excellent issue about the versioning and the versioning might kill us. <laughs> um, it, it is killing us. I don't know if you saw the email going on the mailing list, but uh, Upstream is not very happy about the way we used to package SageMath. So I don't think they will be very helpful in this work. They say we well, don't want, basically I, they say we don't want SageMath into the archive of Debian. There is this meme that Upstream isn't very happy. But what is Upstream not happy about? The messages oh. I've seen are not specific. And I th my guess is they're unhappy that the 3.0 version of SageMath that's in Unstable is ancient compared to 4.4.4 and horribly buggy, which is why it's not in testing and why it probably should just be removed from the archive. Um, it's not clear to me if Upstream has split the hair oh, we don't want anything that diverges even a little bit from the current, you know, we don't want distributors taking this up, or if more what they're unhappy with is just that the package produced a couple years ago is so bad and outdated. Maybe they're not familiar with the way we package software into distributions. So I, I could maybe, oh, you want to, it's fine. It's not even a question, a comment. Actually, SageMath brings a good lesson, I think, or um, how this integrative software should be working together, right? We are Debian developers, we interact with upstream for us. Those little projects which gets incorporated into Sage, I bet they're fascinated by this fact in terms that they become popular because Sage uses them. And I'm not sure what Sage kind of opinion about those little projects is. So. I think it's just a matter of communication and um, organizing the workflow so all parties participate in this project, which is starting from little projects, SageMath, and then Debian developers, that they just coordinate this effort to leap forward. I bet Sage is not interested to carry buggy version of some dependency all along, right? They, just, they are just not. On the other hand, SageMath provides probably nice, um, testing framework for all those little projects in terms, even I believe SimPy is used for unit testing of NumPy or something like that. Because it, it, it stresses it so much, so it, it, it catches all the bugs. So it, there, are, there are multiple benefits and it's just lack of coordination, I think, which is kind of demolishing for all the projects. Little one, Sage and Debian. So I think it just should be some common effort. So I, I had a, a thought, uh, I mean, I think there's a, something which is, I've experienced in other projects uh, with mathematical software is that uh, they love convenience copies of code. They don't think it's a bad thing. They think it's a good thing. And, and their way of doing development is to take snapshots of other people's code and, and integrate it into their source tree and, and ship it. And so from their point of view, what Debian is doing is butchering their source tree, right? And, and trying to replace it with other, I mean, if you've been on hash Debian and you see the response to somebody who says, well, I replaced this Debian package with one from Ubuntu, and, and you see the friendly reception they get. Oh, I can suppose, leaving aside any Ubuntu hostility, I mean, I replaced this package in Debian with this thing from somewhere else, and I, so, Although I don't agree with their point of view, I, I get a bit where they're coming from, that they say they feel like we're breaking their software and making them look bad. Uh, and so, although we don't feel that way, we should try and 
see their, I mean, we're never going to resolve this conflict unless we, we understand what their objection is. And probably asking somebody would be way better than me speculating. But well, I was talking with the uh, project leader of SAGE at EuroSciPy like, a couple of weeks ago. And um, actually, the main problem is that uh, they want to be uh, platform independent. So SAGE needs to work under Windows, for example, where you don't have a package manager. So you need to ship all the dependencies if you don't want people to go and download the stuff and install by hand. So it's, I, they have good reasons to do like what they do. And, um, and I even agree that it's much better for, for, as a user to have just a package that you download and everything works out of the box and you have to care about dependencies. And unfortunately, I have to say, the world is not Debian. I mean, most of the users of Sage are not Debian user. Not yet. Well, <laughs> and okay. And another thing is that because their release cycle is pretty tight, so they they have a lot of people working on Sage, so they continuously fix bugs and release new versions. They of course don't like the idea that all Debian users are stuck with a particular version of Sage. So and this is the fate of every Debian package somehow. But for Sage, which is a relatively young package and really active. I mean, I see why they don't want it in Debian. And I even, I'm even not sure if we should make an effort right now to have Sage in Debian as a Debian package, knowing that in three months, the Sage that is available from the website, which will be much better, much less buggy, will have more dependencies. Well, the trade-off is that to be a Sage user, according to the Sage way, you need to be able to build it and build all the dependencies. And, and that is not real. I don't know how hard that is, but I'm guessing for the average user of Sage, that's a challenge. Well, uh, but they offer binary packages, right? Don't they? Uh, OK. He's saying it's less of a challenge when you use all of the uh, the upstream sources that are already packaged in the Sage source tree. So you just you know, compile and it, and it does them all so, for you. And compiler versions. Okay. And it's not all Python, <laughs> right? I mean, uh, it's C++ and Fortran and Lisp. And uh, I mean, it's a, it's a, it takes most of Debian to, no, I'm exaggerating, but you know what I mean. There's a lot there. You need, you need five different language systems at least. To, to build SageMath, and, and most people don't have those development tools. So I think the answer is they use the binary packages. Is the, is the, so I, I don't know the answer, and to be honest, I'm one of these specialists that, uh, I mean, I have, I don't use Sage because I use the tools that it glues together, and, and so far I haven't needed I mean, I already know it would be more work for me to learn how to use Sage because I already know how to use these other tools. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this project. It's just I'm not motivated to push it myself. Well, the, of course, the people who are motivated will have to do it. Um, I, I think, you know, if, if Sage were in Debian, we would end up with two or three versions. We'd end up with a, a version in stable, which will be admittedly by the end of the cycle old. Um, but then there'll be the version in unstable, which if the maintainer is good, will be relatively up to date, maybe not every three months, every six months or something. And, and via backports, that should be available to uh, the you know, people using stable. So maybe it's just an education effort we need to do with the maintainer you know, upstream. Uh, you know, yeah, we're gonna have an old version, but we'll take care of that. And, and through backports, a new version will be available to everyone. And you know, can we work together to iron out some of these versioning issues? Um, handling the, ver the version dependencies, I think that's the biggest hurdle I see. Be the license allows us to just fork it. I mean, we can just pack it. We don't, we don't need their permission. 
but the ver does anyone see how to handle the version dependency problem? Well, I think um, upstream might have different perception of the version dependencies than we have, right? And you have, if you, if you package some software X and it has a bug and then it gets fixed in the Debian package and it gets fixed in the next upstream release, then upstream depends on the upstream fixed version although we could have a, a much lesser dependency because we already fixed it earlier in Debian in the package. So those dependencies actually do not necessarily correspond to each other. And I, in my perception, the only way to get uh, backports correctly, because if you backport Sage from unstable to stable, you pretty much you know, need to backport all of Python at least, right? That's just about a thousand packages. So that's possible, but unlikely. And so what a much better way would be to have, and we'll probably discuss about this later on, is a framework where we can actually say that Sage is working with the versions and the compiler versions that we actually used in stable, in a backport. So it needs a proper regression test suite, and that needs to be provided by upstream. And they will have that, otherwise they wouldn't wouldn't say that we need this and that, right? They need to figure it out somehow. They might not have it in a way that we can use it, right? Because we, we, most of the tests we cannot even run when the package gets built, right? So it needs, it needs something in addition to unit tests, and which is not there. But I think verifying that it works as intended is better than verifying that we have the version dependencies that up, upstream thinks we should have, which is not necessarily easier, of course. Good. Excellent. So we have five minutes left, according to our very generous talkmeister. So, uh, mice, press. Uh, so, at, and we can certainly keep talking about Sage. I think it's a, a long-term project, and I know there's a mailing list, the package Sage Devel or something on, on Elios, isn't there? If there isn't, there can be. Um, I, I guess the problem is is the current Sage maintainer is not interested in doing it anymore. That's my impression. He, he's too busy. He's got a day job now. Yeah. As, as some of us do, sadly. It's orphaned as far as I can tell. Essentially, Sage is orphaned. So, so uh, you know, uh, it's going to need, I think it, it needs somebody who, who is involved with the upstream project and wants to see it in Debian. That, that's who can, who can really talk to people upstream and, and, uh, and understand what's going on there. Um, so, that it, so we can keep hammering at that for the three minutes that I left you. Or, or is there anything else anybody wants to, a different topic anybody wants to pull in before we wrap up? I managed to kill that discussion pretty well. Okay, well, so carry on. Well, then, then, then um, the other approach to dependencies, version dependencies, would be sort of like we've done with Python and others, is to maintain two versions of some libraries, the version that Sage needs and um, maybe the latest. Um, so, you know, and so it, obviously we'd have to decide. I like your idea, but... Um, whenever the API changes. My understanding of Sage is that it's Python glue to these C or Lisp or whatever the upstream that it's incorporating is. So if the, if the upstream changes an API, it's going to break and it's going to be impossible to support. We, we would have to fork those libraries and, and support two, two versions or work with the Debian maintainer for those libraries and say, like with GCC, we pick a version, and that's the release for Squeeze or Squeeze plus one or whatever. Um, Quick resolution would be to bend, not bend even, Debian policy says that we should not provide copies of the software in other packages. It's not must not, right? So we could come up maybe with minimal set of packages which we really need these old versions in Sage to make it work. And they will not be system-wide available, they would just be part of the Sage. And that would provide a simple solution. And just those which we can rely upon fresh versions in Sage, but that would depend on proper testing. Even with Sage, what was 
there were not that many bugs filed against such math, I believe, but then at some point I had to uh, get new version of networks in Debian and I discovered that that version which is in the Debian is already not working with sage math. So, and it wasn't picked up because we don't have those tests. And Python is really fragile in that sense. It's scripting language, right? Unless we provide good coverage of just somehow sweep through the package to run all the code, we cannot be sure that it's workable. And for that, we need regression tests. But shipping those buggy ones versions I think this is the I, last comment. So make it yeah, I, I think you'll find that Sage, because it's an agglomeration of multiple tools just glued together with Python, very likely any particular version of it requires multiple versions of the libraries because the tools that it glued together use different versions. Okay, well, thank you all, and uh, big thanks to the video, video team for, for helping us out here.